Thank you so much for joining me today, Kendra. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, so to start off, um, how about you tell me a little bit about your pathway to become an artist? Was there anything specific that influenced your decision to follow this path? Was it something that you've just always enjoyed? Um, a little of both. Um, I was always fond of picking up organic things. You know, I was always at the beach and I lived in Plymouth Center. So I was able to visit shops and things on my travels around town. And I would see in the gift shops, like certain things that people would make with you know, driftwood and shells and things. And I always thought, well, I could do that. And I did in my room. Um, I used to make my own doll clothes out of fabrics that I would buy. Um, but one thing that had a very huge impact on me was my mom um, started to notice that I was drawing a lot more. And she brought me to this place in Dennis. It's a clay place. And I cannot remember the name of the man who opened it, but I watched um, a guy throw off the hump, which means they take a large hump of clay and they throw multiple items from that. I watched him throw a percolator teapot start to finish and I was so amazed. So after that, when I, you know, in high school, I took multiple art classes and all of my teachers have been a huge influence on me. So I think it's a culmination of learning to appreciate art that I'd never been exposed to before, but also methods of art that I had not been exposed to before. That sounds great. I'm happy you got to have those experiences. That sounds incredible. It is, it is. And I, as I think about it, I think that I'm very fortunate that my mom was so active in that role, um, that she, she was so inspired. And parents, I, I, I've noticed being a teacher that some parents are like, well, I can't even draw a stick figure. But I think if you, if you see that in your child and they foster that, and a lot of parents do, I think that's really important. Yeah, definitely. Um, so do you have experience with multiple mediums? I know you said that when you were younger, you did a lot of different things with art from creating your own fabric for doll toys, for sculpturing, painting, drawing. Yes, I do a lot of different things. Um, I started off with drawing portraits and portraits of animals. And then um, I had a clay class in high school. Um, Doug Short was my teacher in Plymouth and he was wonderful. And then I decided to go to Mass College of Art. Um, I took a year off in between high school and college just to make sure that I was mentally ready and academically ready because as a student in high school, I was not that good. Um, and then during that time, I took an oil painting class and decided that definitely wasn't for me. But then I went to Mass College of Art and I was exposed to so many different things. Um, I mainly did clay and watercolor and drawing at that point. But as I've been an artist throughout my life, I taught myself how to use pastels. I've sculpted with wire. I can show you my, um, my sculpture that I'm working on with wire. It's something that I saw online and decided I didn't want to spend the money doing it. So I thought I would just teach myself how to do it myself. So um, yes, I like to dabble with all different kinds of things. Keeps me on my toes. Do you have a favorite medium per chance? Clay. Clay, definitely. For sure, yeah. Because just having my hands mushing clay puts me at ease. It just relaxes me. It can also be extremely temperamental, but I'm finding myself um, being re-exposed to different ways of firing clay through different um, groups that I follow on Facebook and becoming reignited with the excitement for the medium. And there's so much involved in it that um, it's not just making clay things and slapping glaze on it. There's so much more to it. So I would say that clay is my favorite. That sounds great. I can imagine that the process of actually like molding the clay is very therapeutic, like you were saying. It is. It is. And it can be frustrating, but it, it can also, you can work through it, you know, whereas um, with a drawing, you know, if the more you get frustrated, the more you ruin the paper. So, I mean, I think with clay is a little bit more forgiving. I remember taking a um, sculpture workshop in Santa Fe, New Mexico, and this woman had been doing these heads and she wasn't constructing them right. So they all kind of leaned this way, but she said that she meant for them to do that. And it was obvious that she just wasn't doing it right, but she was so excited by the way that they formed themselves that how could you even take that away from her? Yeah. yeah. For your artist career, I know that you've been a teacher, you've taught a lot of art classes. Um, 
you saw some of your own work online. What have been some highlights of your career as an artist? The awards I've won. Um, I just landed first place for a sculpture at the Cape Cod Art Museum. Um, I just entered the sculpture that I just showed you um, at, at the Cape Cod Art Center. It's called the National. Um, I've won quite a few awards, which has also been very exciting. Um, I just think that the most exciting thing for me was going to school and just learning about everything, whether it's art history, whether it's design or clay or sculpture, whatever it is. Um, I think that going to college was probably the best thing that I ever did. Congratulations on that, winning that award, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> did you say you had entered that wire piece you had just shown or was it a different piece that won that award? Um, it was a different piece that won the first place at the Cape Cod Art Museum, but this one I just entered in the National. We don't find out if it got in until the 25th, so fingers and toes are crossed. All right, I'll root for you. Thank you. <laughs> So um, the creative economy is very important on the Cape Cod and islands region extending out to Yarmouth way. Um, so as an artist, what have you done slash what are you doing to support that economy? In the past, I've obtained a grant from the Mass Cultural Council to do a free clay program at our local library, um, where at the end of that session, I had an art show that I put together with an opening. They all got dressed up and I called the newspaper and re we really made a big deal out of it. Um, as a teacher, I work in two schools. So it's pretty time consuming because I work the aftercare program as well. So I usually work eight to six, Monday through Thursday and next year will be Monday through Friday. So I try to um, incorporate a curriculum that's sensitive to everything, whether it's culture, whether it's, you know, different forms of art. And what's exciting for me is that I learn along the way um, and just getting them to understand to get off their devices and look at the world a little bit more closely around them. So um, I used to work for the Wareham uh, Council on Aging, and that was very rewarding, you know, getting them to move their fingers and do watercolors or do something different and, you know, smile and giggle and make some jokes and things like that. Um, but yeah, so far that's been my contribution. Hopefully I'll be able to do more. Um, Sounds like working. you've already done a lot. <laughs> Thank you. I, I love children and I love working with people. So I think that that part of it is, is also a large contribution is getting somebody else excited about the world around them. So in addition to building artist skills in themselves, do you feel there are any soft skills such as confidence or organizational skills that you feel are really necessary or that you strongly recommend at least towards becoming an artist? Absolutely. A lot of my students, especially the middle school level, they don't have the confidence and they tend to give me the, not an attitude, but the, eh, you know, that they don't like what they're doing. And I usually point out what it is that's making their piece stronger and what they could do to make their piece stronger or to find something that's beautiful within that so that they can build on that and gain more confidence. And confidence is probably the biggest thing because if they have confidence in that area, then they can have confidence in another area. And then it can sort of web into the different parts of their life that are very important. Confidence is the biggest thing. Yeah, confidence is huge, not only for a career as an artist, but just as an individual. Yes. And I think that with anything, like my mom, she doesn't paint or, well, actually she does paint and draw, but she would mainly do craft things and she never stopped herself from doing that. She always just did it, you know? So I think that no matter what you're doing, even if you're drawing in sand, it doesn't matter, you know, having confidence with whatever you're doing. And especially with a creative outlet, because there was a project I did where I had the middle school students take a word and choose a font that would illustrate that word. And I'll use slimy as a good example, you know, where the font was very drippy and slimy and things yeah. like that. And the color was also very important. And the things I got out of those kids, like some of them, they drew anxiety, lifeless, depression, you know, and it was, I felt really good about that because I was giving them an outlet for expressing things that they probably kept bottled up because they didn't know how to express it. So that as well. 
That sounds like a really good idea too. Just the idea of associating words with certain fonts because there's so many different fonts out there. And then especially with colors too. Exactly. And where words have such an impact, especially lately where everybody's so volatile and sensitive, it's really important for them to, to, to grab a word and say, geez, I really identify with that. And how can I work through it? I had one girl that, um, that did disorder and her, her picture exemplified disorder, the colors, the way she did the drawing was very hard and erratic. And, you know, and I felt that that was probably a good release for her to do that project. Definitely. I, I hope, I hope she got, I hope that was a good release for her too. Exactly. I hope so. I think yeah. it was. It sounds like it was. I'm sure a lot of the kids got that out of it. They liked that one. The English teacher was thrilled. She thought that was the best. That was the best I'm sure she was thrilled with that. <laughs> so what does it mean for you to be a mentor and to work within the Artworks program? Um, the two kids that I've been mentor for, um, Evan was the first one I had, and he was very quiet. He was, um, both came from the Upper Cape School, and um, he was in automotive. Um, so in, in one respect, he could have a conversation with my partner because he's always working on the cars and whatever. But Evan had never worked in clay. And he, um, I saw that he started to really come out of his shell and we became pretty close. Natalie, as you experienced, when I first met her, she was very shy. She was, you know, quiet at first, but as you can see, she's not quiet anymore. Um, but, <laughs> but the bond between her and I is very special. And um, just, she is different because she wants to polish up her portfolio to go to school. So I'm able to, um, help her with that right now she's going to be coming in a few and we're going to be doing clay and she hasn't done clay in a long time and her drawing skills needed a lot of polish and I felt really good about you know just showing her what what I could show her in order to make her drawings better so I like being part of that because the the kids that come to us don't have art in their program so I think that it's a really cool way of getting that into their into their lifestyle yeah, especially we do get a good amount of applicants from the tech schools, like you said, because they don't have an art program. For, so for, the, for them, this is their way to get art into their lives and get like a really meaningful experience through it. I think that creativity is really important because I know for a long time when I lived in Boston after I went to college, there was a span of time where I didn't create much and I started to really feel it. And the more, and then the more I started creating, the more you know, I appreciated snow and flowers growing and the birds that are saying, like there was just so much that was becoming more open to me because I allowed that creativity in my life. And I think that's really important for everyone. Definitely, I agree. Sounds like you've had a good couple experiences with them. Yes. And I know they've had good experiences with you. That's nice to hear. I won, so it's good to hear. Yeah. So obviously it's, you know, it's meant a lot to you to be a mentor in the artworks program. Have you yourself have any mentors in the past? Yes, um, quite a few actually. The first one was a woman that lived um, not even half a mile down the street from where I lived in Manomet. And she needed a full-time nanny after school. And it was a perfect job for me because it was literally a five minute walk from my house. I must have babysat for her for two years before she realized that I drew and she was an art teacher and she was a very good artist and so she taught me how to draw the human figure first and foremost head hands feet toes all the way down and I'll always be grateful for that but what I re I didn't realize this till later is that I'm sure you saw the way that I structure my pottery it's layers and textures and things it wasn't until I was in teaching my first year, I think, when I realized that the way that I build my things is the way that she actually built her jewelry. She also did layers and textures and things like that. So it's funny how they seep into your subconscious in a certain way. But I think my two high school teachers were also very important role models for me. And I think that one of the most important for me was my college professor, Ben Ryderband. Because he was very tough on me and he had to be 
you know, and then in the end, there was such a bond there between the two of us that I still have him in my head when I'm on the wheel, when I'm building with something, when I'm thinking about glazes and things like that. And, oh, Chuck Stigliano, because he was my sculpture teacher at Mass Art, and he was also quite a force for me. Sometimes tough love is, is the best way to learn. You need to be criticized well, so you can grow. Exactly. And I think that I had such a um, cavalier attitude toward my academics that he wanted to break me of that. And boy, did he ever. So <laughs> I was really glad he did. But it was a tough day. <laughs> All right. So if you could give one piece of advice to any young artist out there thinking about pursuing the arts or a career in the arts, what would it be? Learn marketing. Take a business class. I wish I had. I think that that's been the hardest lesson for me. It's all fine and dandy to sit in your studio, listen to stories and make things. Um, it's another thing to actually interact with the public and getting them to buy your work. It's taken a long time for me to actually grasp that. And I don't even know if I have a decent tactic for that. You know, I can't even say, but I know people that don't do art that could sell their shoes off their feet to you, you know, they're that good with marketing. And I just wish that I had taken at least a few of those kind of classes. That's and also, good piece of advice. yeah, it, it, it's the most important, I think. And also to be diverse, you know, if you get locked in, that's why I do so many things. If you get locked into one material, then uh, there was a few years where ceramics were not selling you know, I would do fair after fair and they would not sell. It was all jewelry. And now the, sh the tide is changing. But until that tide changed, I had to think of other ways to get people to come to my table and to become excited and things like that. So being diverse is also, I think, very important. Yeah, having a diverse array, array of products to, to sell to the public definitely would be able to bring more people, I think, to you. Because mm -hmm. at least you have a little bit of everything people who are only interested in certain aspects or mediums in art to purchase. Right. And on my table, I'll show examples of my illustrations, examples of the drawings that I've done and pastels. Like I have a portfolio as well as the books that have been published with my illustrations, but also they're surrounded by all the pots and sculptures that I make. So. I can imagine that works well too, if you get hit like a creative, I'm trying to think of the word a creative roadblock where you're unable to create something a certain medium, you could try to branch out to a different one to try to get through that. I do that. I do that right now. Um, I was just thinking about that when I woke up at two this morning and couldn't get back to sleep that oh, no. I haven't, I haven't done a decent <laughs> drawing. And that's when my brain goes on fire, but that that's, I thought, you know, I haven't done a decent drawing in a long time, but I've been so interested in, this wire sculpture and I've been interested in other things that I've been doing and the clay I it's show season so I've been trying to get into different ways of um just different things to make out of clay not just the same things to you know expand what I make and also I had an issue where the glazes that I usually get from this company called Duncan suddenly decided to go out of business and they don't make my colors anymore so it forced me to to really rethink about my colors. And then I got all these different ones from another company and they didn't fire right. And so I need to go back to the school up here and remember to test and do all the things that then taught me and um, maybe come up with different ways of surface design as well. So being in a box doesn't always work. <laughs> you have to, because it would the, you know, the heavens above will, you know, do something to make you shift. And it's important for a shift. Yeah, to be able to adapt to situations like that. I can't even imagine, like, your... Because Duncan was your... Was that your only source, your primary source for your painting supplies? For the... All my glazes came from Duncan. I was a Duncan girl, tried and true. And I was <laughs> so mad. And I know it was because of the COVID. And that's another reason the COVID is, like, probably the worst thing that's ever happened in anyone's lives, honestly. But... I have a strong feeling that that's what happened, that they just yeah. uh, stopped or whatever. I don't know. But this new company is not, I don't know. I have to give it another shot. But the other thing that was pretty depressing is that a lot of the colors that 
were almost like the ones I use from Duncan are not dinnerware safe. So that's another reason why I have to go back to the drawing board and think of a different way to use these glazes, mm -hmm. but not on the inside. Yeah, in a way that's safe. That's mm -hmm. tough. I wish you <laughs> luck with that. Thanks. Well, I, again, I've been uh, getting myself into different groups of people that are doing alternate firings. And there's a book that I've been alerted to that I want to get for my birthday. So uh, that way I can do different things at home and, you know, maybe shift my gears a little so that I can, you know, keep those colors, but also do something to tweak the inside so that I can use them for dinnerware. Definitely. Yeah. Thank you so much for talking with me today. Thank you for having me. And I hope I talk to you soon. Thank you. Me too. Tell Natalie I said hi. Okay. I, I will. Tell Kara I said hi as well. I will. Have a great day. Thank you. You too, Kendra. Bye. Bye. Bye.